Welcome back, VST here at SP Stick, and in this video, I'm gonna show you what I believe are the best 20 tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, guys. So buckle up, watch very carefully. If you have the S23 series, some will work for you. If you have the S23 Ultra, all will work for you, and let's get started. The first three tips are going to be about the display, because you know what I believe, the display is really what we see first when we take the phone in the hand. So, okay, let's start, guys. Let's go inside the settings, scroll down to display, and there is already, guys, something new from the Galaxy S23 series. This is the so-called Enhanced Comfort. Adjust color tones and contrast of the display for more comfortable viewing. So usually we used to have the eye comfort shield that could be either adaptive or custom, but also now, guys, you can use the Enhanced Comfort. This will even more adjust the color tones and the contrast of the display for your best and optimized viewing pleasure. Tip number two, guys, is going to be about the extra brightness. So, guys, we have the brightness slider, which is actually very nice, and it's a very powerful phone, 1,800 nits. And, of course, we have the adaptive brightness, which can help you regulate the brightness. But if you turn this off, guys, make sure to also toggle here the extra brightness which will increase the maximum brightness. Of course, it's going to use more battery, but during the broad daylight, guys, you are going to get the best out of it. And tip number three, guys, is also related to brightness, but let me show you. Now we go here to uh, the quick settings. We need to tap on the plus sign, scroll down a bit, and find something called the extra dim. Yes, that's related to brightness, but it is doing the very opposite thing. So guys, when you click the extra brightness, the phone display will become darker. And this is very useful when you're using it into some very dim environments. You can just see the difference really is a staggering one. The next five tips are going to be around optimizations and performance, which is of course key for the S23 Ultra being really a flagship phone. So let's start with the first one, guys. We're gonna go inside the settings, and of course, we're gonna scroll down and choose the battery and device care. Now, under the battery and device care, guys, there is gonna be something called the maintenance mode. Protect your privacy while your phone is being repaired. And this is very, very important, guys, because imagine the scenario where your phone somehow dies and you're not able to recover it, and then you send it to a store repair store, and then, yeah, they are trying to repair it, and of course, maybe you don't want them to see your pictures being drunk on the seaside, whatever, doing with the colleagues. So, when you enable the maintenance mode, guys, the phone data is gonna be locked, so they still will be able to repair the phone, but without accessing your private information. And this is actually tip number four. Tip number five is going to be really about the performance. So while we are inside the device care glass, click on the battery, scroll down and find the more battery settings, and then boom, guys, you're gonna have here the performance profile. The standard one is really called standard, but there is also the option to choose a light one, which will prioritize battery, also life and cooling efficiency over processing speed. And I really tested this for days, and this will give you really an amazing battery life without compromising the main performance. So if you're just reading emails, if you're browsing, probably doing also YouTube and socials, this is definitely the profile to be used combined with the WQHD and 120 Hz display. This will get you the most screen on time. So believe me, that's your goal. Tip number six is going to be about security and privacy. While we are back in the settings menu, guys, we need to navigate to security and privacy. Redesigned by Samsung for 5.1, this really gives a very nice overview of all the things related to security. And if you see things like these exclamation marks, you, of course, need to pay attention. When you click here, guys, I'm gonna see device protection is off. So, of course, I need to do an action. When I click here, guys, I'm gonna be able to turn it on. So right now, guys, I will turn it on and my device is gonna be protected. The phone will scan itself and just look for some malware, which is really, really great. While we're still in the settings menu, it's time to show you how you're able to change the default app. So guys, navigate to the applications. While you're here, guys, you're gonna get a list of all your application, the Samsung app setting, but you're gonna have something called choose default apps. From here, you're able to set default applications for browsers, like for example, I decided to use the Google Chrome and not the Samsung internet, but also guys, you're able here to change and use third party launcher. So right now, guys, I have Nova 7. When I click on Nova 7, guys, I will make it my default launcher. And you can just see, guys, also you're able to change the default phone application, the default SMS application, and it's really a very, very useful useful menu, so you should definitely know about it and use it as well. Tip number eight is gonna be for those of you who love play games with this magnificent phone, guys. So, open Game Launcher. 
When you're inside the game launcher, you're going to see all your games here, but then click on the hamburger menu and choose the game booster. Now you're going to find out why. There is an option called post USB delivery. You need, of course, a PD enabled charger. I'm using the standard Samsung 25 watt travel charging adapter. When you hook up your phone, you should be able to enable the post USB delivery. And if you play games with this ocean on, the phone is directly going to get charged to the current. So going to bypass the battery, of course, also reducing the heat and not crippling your performance by not throttling the phone. Post USB delivery, a function you really need to try if you're into games. The next four tips are going to cover comfort. So tip number nine is really very interesting. So hold your finger on the sound button, guys. Of course, you can go and mute your phone, but you have something called temporary mute. Set how long to keep your phone muted before returning to the previous sound mode. And guys, you can choose this one for one hour, two hours, three hours, and also set up a custom time period. This is really great. So imagine you go into a meeting, you know, the meeting is going to take like 30 minutes. You set one hour temporary mute, not to forget to leave your phone on mute and then miss, yeah, probably your girlfriend or let's say the pizza delivery calling. Tip number 10 is going to be really something new released with 1.5.1. Let me show you. I'm going to add a widget here, clicking on the widgets, scrolling down and finding something called battery. And guys, we have the two options for the two battery widgets. This is really something that really people wanted to get for a long time and Samsung listened and finally implemented. So this is the small one. I'm also going to add the big one. I'm going to put it there. This will give you information of all your devices that are connected on Bluetooth, at least the ones that are supported like Samsung Buds and Buds Pro and etc. Now have in mind that it's rather still basic. When I click here, nothing really will happen, but you are able to at least change it from white to black. And guys, you're also able to list the devices you wanna show. So like phone, Galaxy Watch, Galaxy Buds, the S Pen and the other devices. Let me give you an example. I am gonna now remove my S Pen guys. So in fact, connecting it to the phone will now show me that my S Pen has 100% of a battery. The same will happen when you connect your approved Samsung headphones to the battery widget. Tip number 11 is a further personalization function. Honestly, I love that one. You're able to assign custom call backgrounds for your favorite contacts. Let me show you. I'm choosing one contact for edit, guys. Click on the edit button, click on view more, scroll down, guys, and there it is, guys, call background. So from here, I'm able to set up a custom call background only for this particular contact. And of course, there are some featured one, but if you click on the plus sign, guys, you are able to select custom from the gallery, also record a video, and also create something with AR emoji if AR is your thing. Tip number 12 is related to some clock functions. Click the clock, guys, click on the timer, and you're now able to add a 10 minutes timer. You can click start, and that's quite nice. You can go outside, you're gonna have it there as a floating window. But if you go back inside the clock, guys, you can click the plus button, and you can decide to add another timer. So we can now have multiple timers, and they will show here, you're gonna see from this arrow, and you're gonna have the option to check multiple timers. So if you're a fan of boiling eggs, boiling other stuff, right, you can do like this multi-level boiling in real time with this multi-timer. And you can just see here, guys, it minimizes itself. When you click on this, it will expand. And with the arrows, you can navigate between the two timers. As simple as that, you can also maximize this. You can go outside. And if you don't like it, you can close it. And this is why we love One UI. It's very, very, very much customizable. As I have my S Pen outside already, guys, the next four tips are gonna be about S Pen because that's really a very powerful tool and you need to know about it. Now, while I have the S Pen here, guys, go inside the settings, click here to advanced features, all right? Here, you're gonna have something called S Pen, clever, right? Then guys, there is an option called more S Pen settings. When you click inside, guys, you're gonna have a plenty of options, but one of the best one is the S Pen unlock. So if your phone locks while your S Pen is removed, press the S Pen button to unlock it again. Your phone then will stay unlocked until your S Pen disconnects. So you just need to enable this, okay? Right now, of course, I need to enter my PIN. While the S Pen is outside, I'm gonna lock my phone, guys, and now see what happens. I'm just going to double click here, swipe to unlock, no need to enter any pins, face, nothing. We just get this covered by the S Pen Unlock. Tip number 14 is S Pen Navigation. And this works like some Harry Potter style thing. So just have your S Pen in your hand, guys. Open the gallery, hold the button, and voila, 
you can just scroll your pictures, right? And there are also plenty of other things, guys, you can do. I'm just showing you now the very basic stuff, but you can also go up, go down. You can even try to zoom, and you can also try to use the S Pen as a remote shutter. So S Pen navigation is a real thing, and it really works. So if you want to take a family photo, you put the phone somewhere, boom, use this as a remote shutter. Tip number 15 will help you master the screenshots using the S Pen. So guys, I'm scrolling on this web page. I decided I like this particular part of it. When I click here, guys, on the air command, I'm able to click on smart select, then only select what I want. And then guys, I'm able to save only this crop from this particular picture. So no need to do like a full screenshot, then edit it, right? I can just, let's say, click here. I like this part of the screen. I can smart select it, guys, save it, send it, do whatever you want with this. Enough with the S Pen, guys. Five more tips to go. And I believe you're gonna love them because it's camera and also gallery. Okay, keep watching, guys. First things first is the new fancy cutout that Samsung introduced. But what do I mean here? All right, so I'm gonna go inside this picture, guys. If you hold an object, right, it can be a person, animal, flower, whatever, you are able to just pull it away, which is really crazy because by now only iPhone was doing that. So you can now copy, share, save as an image, guys, and you can save this as a PNG with a transparent background and even go and paste it in your favorite applications. Now pay attention, this function also works for video. So let's see, I wanna get a very nice screenshot from this video. I just stop it, guys. I click on the object I wanna extract the AI will do the magic, guys, and you can just see I'm now able to try and save this as an image, guys. Let me just show you the save image because I believe that you need to see this. If I go inside my camera, guys, this is going to be now with a transparent background. And you can do this on animals, flowers, and many objects. While I'm at that picture, guys, tip number 17, I'm going to show you how to remove things you don't like. So click on the edit button, guys. Click here. Choose object eraser. So now some really deep AI will happen, guys. And I, let's say, want to just erase this. I will only select it with my finger, guys. I will press erase, magic will work, and boom, I get now a better picture. Now let's fine tune it further, guys. I don't like this part here, so I'm able to draw with my finger and manually only erase this one, all right? And you can just see the result is really flawless. So take your time, play with this, but you're gonna get some very, very nice results directly using stock applications. Tip number 18, guys, go inside the Samsung Galaxy Store and search for Camera Assistant. This is really a game changer, and I'll explain very shortly why. This is usually a module for good luck, but once you install it, it's going to be become an essential part of the camera settings. From inside, you're able to set up different softening from off to medium and high. Also, quick tap shutter, which eventually will improve shutter speed and, of course, a bit reduce the quality, but the best part why I like it is the capture speed. You can now prioritize quality, balance between speed and quality, and also go full priority on speed. And this is really crazy, but what is even more crazy is the function called auto length switching. So if you remove this function, guys, your phone will never automatically switch between lenses when you try to shoot some close-up objects, right? If you leave this on and you try to shoot something from up close, you're gonna notice that the phone is gonna change the lenses, the main one, the ultra wide, and it'll tell us sometimes to get the best result. This lets you decide and puts you in control. Tip number 19 is gonna be about expert role, which allows you guys to shoot raw DNG pictures and then edit things like highlights, shadows, white balance, and you can do 12 megapixel and also do 50 megapixel raw. And this tip I learned from Chris, thank you so much, guys. When you put your finger here, guys, you're gonna get a lock on the AF and or AE, but if you keep looking, guys, and holding, you can really individually lock the AF and individually lock the AE on a different part of the screen. And this is simply amazing. Of course, it only works with the back camera. And the last tip is gonna be related to what you see on the screen. Star trails, guys. Now you know that S23 Ultra is a very capable camera and of course very powerful, so you can go to more and select hyperlapse, guys. There is this icon that will allow you to shoot star trails, but this icon will only come in if you go here and you select 300. So if you are 245X, it's not gonna be there. So this is good for some other scenarios. Every time you just check the individual time, you're gonna get information on what exact scenarios are. But if you choose here 300, you're gonna get this icon. And when you click it, guys, Star 12's mode will kick in and you're gonna be able to shoot really 
pictures like this so this is not shot by me but it's very very close and guys i really hope that you have enjoyed those tips let me know in the comments down below if you're using some of them let me know if i missed any and i need to do a follow-up video thank you so much for watching guys stay safe and i'm gonna meet you in one of my next videos and with that said vst over and bye